What's up everybody? Welcome back to FNG Academy. I just had a quick announcement. I'm proud to say that we've been helping people get selected for three years now. I've been getting a lot of messages about uh, people thanking us and saying that they just graduated from uh, selection and they got selected. Uh, people graduating the Q course. Uh, one of my buddies just sent me a video uh, from the Charlie committee. Yes. If you guys have ever heard of the FNG Academy, raise your hands and all their hands went up and it just filled me with pride. Um, so part of the way that we do that is making sure that you guys are physically fit and ready for selection. And the way we've been doing that for the past couple years is by sending you to a Green Beret we know and trust, Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. So if you want to get selected, you need to be in the best shape possible and you need a programmer who knows what they're talking about. So go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK to get a discount. Tell him we sent you and hook you up. Congrats to everyone who's been getting selected lately and we'll see you guys on the next one. What? Intro and then do the sales. I want an intro. Bro, you gotta do it. You do the intro. No, you do it. I don't want to do it. That's why we gotta switch it up. Because I've been working all day already. I'm tired. Go ahead. I want you to do it. I don't want to do the intro. Too bad. It's They expect you to do the intro. Go. They expect you. Go. Come on, dude. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. Uh, today, what are we here for? We've got one of the probably more requested shows in a while, other than SEAL Team. The original. The Unit. The Unit. All right, before we get into this episode, if you guys are not aware, we have the Team Room, which is a space that we created on Patreon where we put exclusive videos. A lot of you guys that have been around since the beginning of the channel know how we started helping people get selected. A lot of that content has moved over to the Patreon. Uh, so check us out there, patreon.com forward slash the team room. No. So check us out there, patreon.com forward slash S <laughs> patreon.com forward slash FNG Academy. I promise we'll get through this. <laughs> We've got uninvited guests. You want to wait till they're gone, boss? No. The plane only gets one shot. You don't know where our weapons dealer is headed next. We've got to go now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what, you don't like the tactical donkey? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. So first of all, you got two, like, obvious black americans yeah like they don't look afghan at all no like <laughs> they, they don't they don't they're not fitting in he looks like he sells car insurance <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're in good hands <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> and that you could trust him uh, like explicitly and then you have a whole team of enemy fighters in the back of this truck and they were like Instead of calling Bosco and like getting out of there, he was just like, "No, nah, the plan continues," <laughs> and you just start whipping out laser range finders and set like, up all this equipment, <laughs> setting up a tripod and like all our American equipment. They're like, hey, look at the black guy and his white friends. What are yeah. they doing over there? It's like... <laughs> I just, I love the donkey though. <laughs> he like pulls it off. It's just loaded to the gill. <laughs> One of the Mexican teammates is like, "No, mame way." <laughs> Like, bro, this is fucking ridiculous. Uh, they're like five feet from you. They are. They're right and he there. He even said hi to him. He was just like, this is absolutely ridiculous. Like, you would never get away with this. What, yeah, but what do we know? They're <laughs> yeah, cag, man. That's true. We'll ask uh, Tyler next time he's here. We're supposed to do this episode with Tyler, but we got uh, backed up on filming. So uh, we're going to see if he'll, he'll come out next month, which he's already said he would. So we'll get more episodes with Tyler on. And maybe episode two of... of uh, the unit we could ask if any of this is legit. Ask if they have tactical donkeys and keg. Yeah. And open up the safe. Uh -huh. Yeah, Billy. Uh, you got a cruise in my area? No, no, I'm fine. I need two minutes. I need you to run some boys down to the airstrip. Yeah, wait. It's yeah. a far service plane there. Yeah, we need that wheels up and flight ready now. With my authority. Well, yeah, with the pilot would be good, but again, the ignition will right. suffice. That's right. Yeah, I'm looking at it too. Okay, and liaise to Opcon, Commander General of the National Guard. Did you say Commander General of the National Guard? <laughs> yeah, that's like, 
This, so you just happen to be like at this one guy's house that has everything you need to plan an op. He just called and ordered an airplane. Yeah, <laughs> like a pizza or something. Yeah, he's got a homie that's a pilot. <laughs> and you just call him; he'll answer anytime. He's got hey, all sheriff. the rifles he needs. He got this guy's got maps. He's got everything he needs to plan an entire operation. Yeah, that doesn't happen. Huh? That's not how it works. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. Imagine they called you and you're just like at your buddy's house and like, hey. Like, or you saw something on the news, like, this is going on. Like, first of all, how did the news get there before you found out? Right. So the news had to find out, like, journalists had to find out. They got there and started, you know, streaming it live on air. And then now you're seeing that and then you're reacting. And you just happen like, to be, like, an hour away from the place, too. Yeah. So, like, if that really happened, the whatever unit they want to handle it would be getting calls before the journalist would find out it's happening. Right. And then you would be spun up and you would just get back to base so you can go get your stuff, get your gear, and then go operate. But this guy's like, I can't fucking do the glasses. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's great. <laughs> I love how the guy just, like, starts barking orders. He's like, open the safe. Yeah. And then calls the sheriff, like, hey, you got a unit in my area. I need this. Two guys, two minutes. I need an airplane. Pilot would be nice, but the keys and the ignition will suffice. Like, come on, like, buddy. He's gonna fly the fucking plane. <laughs> yeah, it just seems ridiculous. And there's also like two guys. Like, there's another team of operators somewhere yeah. that are sitting ready to go like, on standby at their unit with their yeah. equipment. Because you're, when you're on standby, you're ready to be spun up within an hour. You're not just like at your buddy's house kicking it. <laughs> And then all of a sudden trying to pull it off on the fly. Yeah. You wouldn't be on call at that point. Someone else would be on call and they'd be sitting, you know, ready to go. Yeah. Cool. Like, cool. I get it. I'm not, I'm not like yeah, mad cool at scene. it. It's a cool scene. It's just not very realistic. Hijackers got a spotter. They have to have a spotter. Three men were shot approaching the blind spot of the plane. There it is. There it is. Abort. Abort. Bank left. Bank left. Now. Take the bearing on that. You're banking left. I'm trying not to shoot. <laughs> I'm my looking at the sky right now. Bear two six five magnetic from the midpoint of the airfield. We are about to eat a rocket. Can you side slip me and put it on the road? So first of all, I just thought that scene was ridiculous. Like you have no plan. All of a sudden, you're like, they have to have spotters. Looks up. Well, there there he is. <laughs> side bank. And the beat. spotter's like, ah. <laughs> He's like, ah, you got me. <laughs> and he's like, side bank, <laughs> now. The pilot's probably like, don't tell me how to do my job. And then he listens, banks like super hard right, and then he tells the guy in the back to take a <laughs> get a is, bearing, get a bearing on that. It's like, get a bearing? I'm trying not to <laughs> shit my pants. You get a bearing on that. You're telling this guy to barrel roll. We're almost upside down right now. And you just want me to, like, plan out this whole operation. This seems all very willy-nilly yeah. at this point. It's like there's no plan. You're on the fly. This seems absolutely dangerous. If anything, you're making it the situation worse. Like, we already have a hostage situation, and now we have this, like, two random uh, Delta operators that are just, like, flying around private jets, <laughs> banking it in, making calls on the fly. Yeah. Like, dude, you're you're making this whole thing so much harder than it needs and to be. And also when they get on the ground, you see that nobody's expecting them. So they don't know what the fuck's going on. You just got these two mavericks over here just going crazy. Yeah, and he comes around and just starts flopping his d everyone's forehead. <laughs> and he's just like, don't listen to you, don't listen to you, don't listen to you. I'm in charge. Like, yeah, the, the two guys that showed up on a private jet <laughs> are just suddenly in charge like you have no equipment you don't even know what's happening like no one's even told you what's happening. he's got a handgun and a hunting rifle <laughs> <laughs> hey, as for my orders you have no authorization until your entire team is in place well, I'm sure that authorization is forthcoming. Well, this operation's under the control of the Boise ASAC, as his representative and on behalf of the Justice Department. Would you excuse me, please? And on behalf of the Justice Department, I just want to advise you that any further action on your part be treated as a violation of federal law. <laughs> so stupid. This guy's an asshole. Yeah, he's a total dick. He's just like, oh, FBI? Ha, <laughs> <laughs> losers. How'd they even get in there? Like, into the 
operations center of basically of this whole operation. He front flipped the Cessna into the <laughs> spot. Yeah, they just walked in. They just slid in and like, was no, like, "Excuse me, buddy." He's like, "I'm in charge now." And everyone's like, "Who the fuck? <laughs> Who is this guy?" We don't exist. And he's like, "I'm black. He's white." <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! General, shut up! FBI, shut up! Where's the CIA? Not here. Call him. Tell him to shut up. <laughs> President, suck. <laughs> like everyone has to shut up because this guy got on there. Yep. And he's just like the the funniest part is if you, when you look at the the um, setup that the FBI has, it's massive. Like they already have a full talk tactical operations center completely set up. Like yeah. they know more about what's going on than anybody. And this one guy that has nothing but his dick in his left hand and a 1911 in his right hand <laughs> is going to come take over and run the entire thing. <laughs> Like, it's like, no. <laughs> this guy was at home an hour ago yeah. watching on the news. These guys have been there, it looks like, 40 years already. <laughs> they got some sort of cute bomb on the plane. And these chuckleheads waiting for authorization are going to get a lot of people killed. Now, we are going to take down this plane. Yalla halan. Say it. Yalla halan. Meaning, look out or get ready. Is what the lookout says when assaulters approach the plane. It's a spotter signal to lower the air. How does he know that? I know. Pause. <laughs> Why, what? <laughs> how does he? How's he got so much information all yeah, of a sudden? It's like you know exactly what they're gonna say to initiate the. Yeah, he he knows that there's a bomb on. He knows that they're gonna say Yalla Halan, and that's gonna set off the whole plan. And as long as he says that from the spotter's location. Which the spotters knew that they got seen right. because yeah. they saw the plane like 10 feet above them doing a freaking barrel roll. <laughs> so, like, why wouldn't they just move? They're right. not going to stay in the same exact location, like, just sitting there. This whole plan is ridiculous. And then he goes up and he just starts <laughs> pulling rangers out to, like, take them Who from command. Who could show me a ranger tab? Who could show me a ranger tab? Come with me. It's like, actually, they're general <laughs> Is or was it a colonel or the general? I don't, know, I don't know what it was. But their commanding officer is like, nah, dude. Like, and you're just gonna come <laughs> not, tell them to come with yeah. him. Well, if you know how the military works, yeah, you don't just bypass chain of command because some guy in civilians walked up and says, "Come with me if you have a ranger tag." <laughs> and I promise you, you can go to any unit like that's not in ranger regiment or SF. And ask how many people have a ranger tab. It's gonna be like one or two dudes. It's like half the unit in this yeah, one. Yeah, they're this all, one, like, all and they're all national guard too. Like, yeah, come on. every one of you guys went to ranger school. I don't think so. And what does ranger school teach you about running <laughs> operations like this? Like maybe if they were rangers and had ranger scrolls, I would definitely be like, all right, rangers come with me. We're gonna do an assault. Like that's the perfect pairing is rangers and CAG. Like they work together all the time. But this guy's just like, nah, I just want some. Uh, Ranger school qualified leaders <laughs> <laughs> come with me and be willing to throw your entire career out the window <laughs> yeah. because I asked you to. It's like, come on, dude. Get out of here. It's so ridiculous. Oh, real quick, guys, just so you're wondering if we watched all the drama between the wives, the answer is no. Place <laughs> <laughs> you in custody. Sure, that won't be necessary. So you're stepping down. That won't be necessary either. Nobody shoot. Nobody shoot. <laughs> Who the hell are they? Who the hell are they? That's black and that's white. It just seems ridiculous to me that you wouldn't want to share your plan with the FBI. Right. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> this guy is like, the FBI has lost complete control over this whole scene. Like, yeah. you got people walking in the gates. You got people flying in from, you know, parachuting down. You got these four people, essentially. Two of them banking in a Cessna they got, the, they got from a civilian. And then two of them just free-falling into the operation, like, hella late. <laughs> like... <laughs> Like, it's nighttime. Later. Yeah. Like a day and a half later, and all of a sudden, they're just like, don't shoot. And they're just like, shh. It's so cool. The Calvary's here. It's like <laughs> the four people versus the entire FBI, like, like full tactical operations center and like supported by the National Guard. Like th there was a whole team, and these four guys are just coming in to take over. He's, the whole time, he's like, wait till my team gets here. And then, yeah, it's four. It's just of them. two more guys. <laughs> That's like, your team. Okay, buddy. Thank you. 
when you were in Camp McCall, could you sneak up on anybody in the woods? No. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. You know how loud that is? Dude, walking through the woods, I don't care how you tiptoe through it. It's loud as shit. Branches are breaking. Yeah. You're kicking stuff over. No, and first of all, and then second, these guys just stayed in the exact same spot, like just hoping nobody comes looking for them. <laughs> After seeing, the, they locked eyes with the people who yeah. were playing. Yeah, <laughs> they were like, whoa, <laughs> oh! taking selfies with them and stuff. Like, yeah. And then all of a sudden, they're just like, nah, we could stay here. And then there's just like, he snuck up and killed them all by himself. You know, him and this National Guard guy are like nin night ninjas. Yeah, dude. They just hovered. This show's booty, bro. Yeah, it's not that good. He had one uh, line. <laughs> he had two hours to practice that line, and he still ruined it. Still jacked it up, bro. Yalla. <laughs> bro, if... <laughs> He's like, shit, what am I supposed to say? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, hala, hala. <laughs> if we had an operation together and I was waiting on the plane for you to be like, hey, open the back door, and you called in and it was like, open the door, I'd be like, Kurt, what the <laughs> Why you sound like that? <laughs> Kurt, why you sound like that? Kurt's been compromised. Yeah. <laughs> Some random dude's telling uh, us to open the back door. It's like, yellow. bro, you had one job. Like, so Kurt, this, yellow? <laughs> yellow. Kurt? Oh, yeah. No, it's not. Hola. Kurt is not here. Hello, <laughs> like, yellow. <laughs> hello, my friend. You start saying it in different combinations. Like, you only, you only think that that would work because you don't speak their language. Yeah. But so if people you, know each other. People know each other. If you told me, like, hey, man, open the back door or open the back door, I would know if it was you saying right. open the back door. So you just think that because you could because say those words. Because they're foreign, that they can't tell the right. difference. Right. <laughs> Between different people. <laughs> You're saying in their language. That's so racist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, man. He was like, no, they don't speak English. They don't know the difference between one person and another person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what? <laughs> You're telling me that you know that the whole plane is rigged with explosives and you're going to breach with an explosive? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Are you saying you would also do this? Well, I mean, it's not, unless it's like right up against it, it's not going to, it shouldn't. You don't know where the explosives are. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know what's in there. So, I mean, it's a risk they could at have, the very least. They could have a block of C4 on the back side of that uh, tr door. Yeah. They have C4 lining the entire plane. Why wouldn't they put one on that door? <sighs> Look, I don't know. <laughs> this, this mission is literally going to go him sticking that charge, him blowing that charge, and then everybody blowing You're up be... in one giant yeah. mushroom cloud. And then the FBI agent going... Yeah, cool story, bro. <laughs> Told you so. Told you, you dumbass. <laughs> and he didn't even know that they're doing this. But you're telling me then the FBI agent can't see these guys walking up to the plane to like conduct the operation? There's some holes in the story. The, the entire story is <laughs> one big hole. <laughs> you have to suspend belief. All right, go. It gets better, though. <laughs> but it keeps going. But wait. But wait, there's, there's more. more. Hey. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> Middle Eastern that's, Steven Seagal. That's Steven Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> that essentially, this entire operation hung on the fact that he was going to breach, go through that door, and shoot that guy before he clicked the clack. Yeah. 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 The whole that thing. Was the whole, that was the whole thing. That was the whole thing. And then you convince them to open the back door. And instead of making the breach point, entering through that back door, you simultaneously breach the side door, risking blowing everybody up. And then having to get pushed up in there. And what weapon system do you bring? <laughs> a a, pistol. a <laughs> single stack 45 <laughs> pistol. So now you have to do mag change after five uh. rounds, six rounds. Like, what were you thinking? Why wouldn't you just have the two operators in the back 
bring proper weapon systems, flow in, and then kill the the guys. Why they have yeah. shotguns? That's a really dumb decision too. <laughs> yeah. Well, imagine now there's hostage rescue situation where the guy is carrying one of the passengers going like this. What are you gonna do with a shotgun? Not only is she gonna hit, get hit with buckshot, he's gonna hit with buckshot. <laughs> Like, buckshot. <laughs> buckshot, buckshot, buckshot. He's like, nah, Dave Chappelle that has got birdshot, buckshot, birdshot, buckshot. It's <laughs> so like everyone's getting uh, smoked on this plane because he decided to to bring birdshot with him. You guys have forced me to watch a lot of military stuff. At no point in time has anybody used a shotgun to carry out an operation, so I was just asking. It's a... Yeah. It, oh, no. The guy used... Uh, Terminalist. Terminalist. The guy oh, used... He cleared a giant compound giant with compound. massive <laughs> open areas with a shotgun. With a shotgun. And then when we talk smack about it, they're like, no, that's all he had. And I was like, no, okay. <laughs> I'm sure okay. he had access to something more yeah. suitable. I bet he could have figured something out. <laughs> I'm like, come on, dude. All right, guys. So that's... He just goes through and smokes everyone in the 19th He ends up having to do a mag change. He doesn't wear body armor. Nope. Like... He doesn't wear a helmet. He he picks the worst plan. He big dicks every single other uh, entity that's on there, that's on scene, which how long did it take to get National Guard there, uh, <laughs> 10 Ranger qualified <laughs> soldiers, a CAG unit that flew a, a, a plane in and then free falled the other half of a four-man team, <laughs> an entire FBI team, set up computers. They had Humvees outside, like... This is a three-week operation in order to to get these guys off the plane. This is the stupidest show ever. <laughs> and and this then is meanwhile, just the first episode. <laughs> this is just the first episode, but it's just half of this episode that's condensed down into essentially 10 minutes because the other 30 minutes is women arguing with each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nothing more uh, I want than on a Friday night to crack a cold beer and watch women argue about... <laughs> Whose husband has more rank in the military structure? All right, guys, hope. Okay, that's a punk ass bitch. He doesn't want to be told what to do. Yeah, stupid, <laughs> stupid asshole. Before he's gonna do it. I'm just going to do it because I wanted to do it. Okay? I was going to cap it off anyways. I was about to cap it off. You know, tell daddy what he going to do. Oh, my God. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that episode of Beers and Breakdowns. Sorry if you enjoyed the unit before this, but this shit is boo boo, son. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? That shit is boo-boo, son. Boo-boo, son. <laughs> new. Oh, more cheek, less hole. <laughs> less cheek, more less hole. Cheek. There you go. <laughs> yeah, this shit's ass. Less cheek, more hole, baby. Uh, this thing's a tiny little square body booty with a big ass. <laughs> Nasty gaping <laughs> butthole. Square body booty. <laughs> With a oh. gaping butthole that doesn't match the skin tone. Jesus. All right, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace. <laughs> this shit is boo boo, son. <laughs> boo boo, son.